Hi, and thank you so much for joining me for our Psalms 119 challenge. Today is day 15, and we are reading verses 113 to 120. I pray that today encourages, equips, and empowers you to live a victorious life. And I know that it will challenge us because it has already challenged me. I want to start in the NIV version with verse 113. The psalmist here is saying, I hate double-minded men but I love your law. We can stop right there because it's already telling us something very important. The psalmist is saying, I don't like people who are double-minded. I want something secure, something I can trust, something that I can rely on and know that it will never change. Double-minded people, they change. But the word of God that I love, the psalmist loves the word because it is sure. It is a foundation that will never fail. It does not shift. It does not change its mind. The Word and God in Jesus Christ, who is the Word, the Holy Spirit, there's nothing false in God. There's nothing false in His Word. There's nothing that will ever shift. And so the psalmist is saying, I'm clinging to that. I'm clinging to the thing that will never change and never disappoint. So let's talk about double-mindedness. I don't like double-minded people either, but I can't be quick to judge because I'm often double-minded. We can be double, double-minded means you go from one thing to the other. You maybe are in faith and then you're in fear. Maybe you're clinging to truth and then you cling to the lie of the enemy. You're going back and forth. Maybe you claim to know God and then you deny him with your actions. So we can be double-minded. Other people are double-minded. And the Bible is so clear in James 1, it says that a double-minded man is unstable in everything that they do. You know me, if you've watched me long enough or known me long enough that I, I live by analogies, I learn by analogies. And as a water skier, one of the greatest analogies I can think of about being the danger of being double-minded is if I was on a dock and I had to make a choice between two power sources, two boats, and I wanna go with this boat, but yet I wanna go with this boat, and I'm hanging on to two handles that are connected to those boats. What do you think would happen if I'm hanging on to this rope and I'm hanging on to that rope? What would happen is I'm gonna go back and forth, I'm gonna be unstable, I'm gonna be ripped apart, nothing good is gonna come of it. And that's what the psalmist is saying here, double-minded people, I don't want anything to do with them. And I'm adding to that and, and say in a safe way, I know we're not to add to scripture, but I'm applying it to myself. I'm not just gonna look at other people and say, I don't like double-minded people, I really don't, but I also don't like it, and God doesn't like it when I'm double-minded. In James, it talks about, we go to God and we, he says, if you need wisdom, come and ask me. But when you ask me, don't doubt, because if you're doubting, you're double-minded. And that's what the psalmist is talking about here, is about being double-minded. So in our daily walk with God, we have to make sure that we're not double-minded, that we don't go from faith to fear, that we don't go from trusting God to doubting God, to asking Him for wisdom, but then doubting if He's even given it to us. And I am so guilty of that. So that's our first challenge from the psalmist. Then he goes on and he says in verse 114, he says, you are my refuge and you are my shield. And today I'm reading from the NIV version. I have put my hope in your word. Again, he's putting his hope in the word of God that will never fail, never change. And he's saying, God, you're my refuge. What is a refuge? A place of refuge is where you go to be safe. Maybe it's where you go it's your home. It's where that place where you can just be you. It's a refuge. It's a safe place. And he says, you're my shield. That's, that's that place of protection. That's what God is to the psalmist. And I pray that that's what God is for you and for me on a daily basis. He says, I put my hope. That word hope is not like a wishy-washy hope. I sure hope God comes through. No, that word hope, when it's translated, is confidence. I'm putting my confident trust 
in you. I have a firm expectation that what you say in your word is true and it will come to pass. You're not double-minded, God. Your word is sure. So that's why he goes to God to be his refuge. He goes to God to be his shield. That's where he puts his hope. And we know in Hebrews that the Bible says that our hope is an anchor to our soul. It is what's going to keep us from being tossed about from double-mindedness. It's confidently trusting in God and his word. He says, away from me, you evildoers. Is there any evil in your life today that you need to say, away from me? It's time to get out of my grill. It's time to get out of my space and, and move away from that thing that could cause you to be double-minded. Maybe you're hanging out with people that are full of fear, full of negativeness, full of doubt. You become who you hang out with. Maybe there's someone right now Maybe there's some place right now. Maybe there's something in your house that you need, like the psalmist, to say, depart from me, evildoer. And separate yourself from that thing or from that person. He says, away from me, you evildoers, that I may keep the commands of God. This shows me that who we hang out with can keep us from following God's commands. The Bible says, cut loose. Move away from the things that hold you back and run the race that God has set before you. Throw off all the things that entangle you and run his race. So that's basically what the psalmist is doing there. He's living out the word that we had. He didn't have it, but we have it. And we know that God says to us, cut loose, throw off anything that entangles you. And maybe that's someone who is an ungodly influence in your life. Could even be a Christian that's in your life, but maybe they're not healthy. Maybe they're not for you. Maybe there's something in their life that's holding you back. My daughter left a beautiful saying in my Bible the other day, and I was going through, it was a couple months ago, I was going through a pretty tough time of separation. And my daughter just left this note, and it said, you cannot move forward with a negative wind in your life because it's always going to suck you back. And so I encourage you to take that to heart today. Let's say, depart from me, evildoers, evil situation, evil habit, whatever it is that keeps us from following God. And so we can cling to the word of God and obey them. Sustain me, this is verse 116, according to your promise, I will live. You need life today, it comes in the promises of God. He says, do not let my hopes be dashed. Um, the psalmist here is so real with God. I love him. <laughs> I have never met him, but I just love how real he is. He's saying, God, I need you to sustain, sustain me. There's all this evil coming at me, and if you don't, I'm not going to live. I need you to not let my hopes be dash, dashed. Don't let my confidence in you, God, be dashed. Uphold me, and I will be delivered. So he, he kind of shifts from that, kind of says, God, it's time for you to show up. Don't, I keep putting my finger in my face, sorry about that. Don't let me dis be disappointed. Don't let my confident hope in you be dashed. He says, uphold me, and I will be delivered. Then he says again, I will always cling to your decrees. I will always have regard for your decrees. And then he just talks about the Lord. You reject all who stray from your decrees, for their deceitfulness is in vain. All the wicked of the earth you discard like dross. Dross is when you heat up metals like silver. It, it's the impurities that float to the top. And God's like, he's saying, God, you just discard it, that dross. And he says, therefore, I love your statutes. He's saying, I can count on you, God, to take care of this evil in this world. That doesn't mean that we don't have our part to play. Our world is full of it right now. As Christians, we need to rise up, but we also need to not be double-minded and, 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 and lose our hope in God because we know we need to have faith that God is at work 
and all the evil that God's going to heat us. Uh, he might be in this heating session right now. He might be heating up to get the impurities to the top so he can wipe off the dross. And so the psalmist is trusting God to do that. And he says, therefore, I love your statutes. He says, I love you, God, because you don't move. You're not double-minded. I cling to you. You're my protection. You're my shield. You're my hope. You're my provision. I can count on you to work in my life, and I can count on you to take care of the evil that is coming against you, God, and that's coming against me as your servant. And we can count on that too. He closes with, my flesh trembles in fear of you. I stand in awe of your love, of your laws, and his love. <laughs> Last week, or a week and a half ago, I was in Germany, and I was driving through Germany, through Austria, the Austrian mountains, and let me tell you something, I was in awe. My son Dalton looked at me several times and says, Mom, get your eyes on the road. I just was in awe of the beauty of God's creation. And I wish that I could say on a daily basis that I am just in awe of God to that magnitude. I love God. I, I am disciplined in, in studying the Word. I want to live out the, my, His will for my life. But there, I, I want to come to a place in my life, and I'm just getting real with you right now, where all I see is Him, where all I can see is His beauty, and that I, on a daily basis, stand in awe of Him, like I did those mountains that I was in awe of because I knew He created. But I want to be in awe of His love for me, in awe of His laws, of His Word, in awe of His creation, in awe of who He is, in awe of what he's done for us. That word in awe means you just stop with your mouth open. You're overwhelmed by a realization of how magnificent he is. And it stops you in your tracks. I pray that today we will be in awe of God, that we will focus on him and our mouth will drop that, that God will give us eyes to see and ears to hear how good he is. Because when we become in awe of him, it's kind of like when I was driving in the, in the mountains, all I could see was the mountains. It's all I could pay attention to, to the point where Dalton's like, Mom, get your eyes on the road. And so as we are in awe of God, we won't be able to see the negative things. We won't be able to be afraid. We won't have room for any of those things. So I think that's how we need to close out our session is asking God to help us come into a place of awe. He says, I am, I stand in awe of your laws. My flesh trembles in fear of you. And that word fear doesn't mean like you're coward. Like God doesn't want us to be afraid of him because he wants us to approach him. But we approach him with this awe. Like I stand in awe of you, God. I tremble, my body trembles because I'm in such awe. I, I, and we do want to fear not following after him because he's so good. He's so good and he will not fail us. Remember, he is that rock. He is never double-minded and that just brings us back to where we started. You can trust him. So I ask you today, I always like to close with some challenges is there anything that's causing you to be double-minded today? Is there anything that maybe is causing you to be in fear instead of faith, following after the lies of the world and the lies the enemy tells you instead of clinging to the truth of God? Remember, a double-minded man receives nothing, is unstable in all that he or she does. So evaluate your own life today. Ask God to show you. Search me, God, and show me, just as David prayed. If there's any offensive, double-minded thing, in me. I want to ask you, where are you seeking refuge today? Is God your refuge? Is he your shield? Or are you seeking refuge in the things of the world? Maybe an addiction, maybe food, maybe shopping, maybe people. Maybe what is it you run to when things get bad? We need to make God our first refuge and then he'll show us who to go to. What's your hope in? 
like the psalmist is our hope in God, is our, not like wishy-washy hope, are we confident in him? What are we placing our confidence in? And what do we need to step, separate ourselves from? What evil is in our life that is contrary? Evil simply is something that's contrary to God, contrary to his love, contrary to his law, something that will trip us up. Is there something we need to cut loose today? And are we standing in awe of him? All right, may the Lord bless you. I look forward to our next reading. I learn as I talk. I mean, God just brings out stuff as we're going along. And I'm just so thankful you're joining me on this journey. And I look forward to tomorrow when we read more and dive a little bit deeper into the heart of the psalmist in Psalms 119. God bless you. Bye.